Hello everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Abigail and thank you so much for clicking on my video. I feel like I said that very fast. This is episode 11 of the Strawberry Stitches Knitting Podcast and I feel like I didn't even address the fact that we're in the double digits now. I feel like episode 10 was like a milestone and I didn't even like mention it last video. So this is episode 11, we are in double digits. I don't know if that's significant or not. I feel like this is a little bit crooked. I try to fix it. It's a little bit harder than I would think to set up right here because I have to like make sure this, like the bookshelf is like straight. But if it's not, just bear with me. I want to say hello to everyone that is new here because my video did really, really well last time. And I got like... 100 plus subscribers and that was like insane. I did not expect it to do that well. I kind of almost scrapped the video because I, I wasn't exactly happy with it, but like this like the sound was weird I thought the lighting was weird and I tried to fix the lighting people said the lighting was fine So I think I'm blind, but yeah, apparently that did really well And I think you guys liked it. So yeah, I hope you're new here um, I live in Canada with my family and my two dogs and well, more specifically, New Brunswick, Canada, and I'm a knitter, and I like to knit things, so there's a little introduction. Don't mind background noise if you hear any. I live with my family, and we live in kind of a small house, so that's fine. I'm going to go ahead and get started with my first FO. I have two finished objects for this video, so I'm just going to start with the first one I finished and I'm going to talk about it very briefly because it's small. This is the Italian Summer Scarf by Francesca aka The Italian Knitter here on YouTube and this is her first pattern and it's free and I knit it, <laughs> obviously. It was a really really nice pattern. I'm going to get into the specs and then I'll get more into why I decided to knit this. So this is a knit in Diamond Luxury Pure Organic Silken Merino. It was like just this one-off skein I got from my local yarn shop. We were just in there and I just kind of wanted something so that's what I got. And I, it was in like the Sophie scarf craze of last year so I was like, I can do this. I was like looking at every single skein and they're like, what can I do a sewing scarf with? I can do a sewing scarf with anything. So this is what I got and I had never worked with silk before at the time. So I was like, this is going to be a super special little scarf. And then I didn't use it for a really long time. But then Carsley Handmade and Britton Lily hosted a special skein cow. And I was like, this is the perfect opportunity to knit this up and I took a picture and posted on my Instagram it's not the best picture because it's like here I'll put it right here it was like super gloomy every time I wanted to take a picture it was gloomy like by the time I finished this scarf and the time the cow was over it was like no sun no sun any moment so that was uh, kind of sad so like on the 9th of June I decided to just bite the bullet and take the picture in the gloominess um, and then now we have a very gloomy picture, <laughs> but it's fine. And the cow ended on June 10th, so I was like really pushing the deadline. I knit this in 5mm needles, so I think that might be half a needle size. Either, I don't know what the original pattern calls for. Oh look, I have my Ravelry pulled up over here so I can look at notes, so that's why I'm looking over here. So it originally calls for Sanin's Garden Line using a 4mm needle. But this yarn was more of an Aran weight, so I had to use 5mm. And I also didn't have very many yards to work with, and I was worried I'd run out. So I, I sized up. And it is supposed to be a summer scarf too, so the looser the gauge the better. And I was, I knitted to put in my hair, and I think that looks really cute. I haven't worn it in my hair yet. But I will, and it looks really cute just around the neck too. I love, I just love a little tiny scarf. I knit it to, like whenever I did the increases, I only increased this to 12 stitches, and then I knit straight for a really, really long time. I think I did an 
eyelet row every 12 rows and then I did like I did the eyelet row without increases for 20 like like 21 times so I think besides the increasing and decreasing ones there's 21 eyelets if that matters to you I don't know I just knit it until it had the length I wanted it's pretty long like it kind of like stretches all the way out when I do this it like is about that size I just wanted it long to be able to put in my hair and tie and kind of have some like hanging down but uh, maybe I'll wear it in my hair eventually. I just haven't gotten around to doing that. I would definitely knit it again and I can't wait to see if the tie knitter has any other designs because I would definitely knit from her again. I really liked this pattern. So yeah, I'm just going to roll it up and then move on to my next FO. There, it's so cute. Okay, my next FO is probably, you can already tell, is the one I'm wearing. This is my T number one by My Favorite Things Knitwear. Sorry, couldn't think of it. I remember last podcast, I said I was going to knit this up with Ilmani Sabri, but I ended up not doing that. For some reason, I just felt this would look best in red, in some red stroll. From nitpicks and I really really think it does I'm gonna get up and show this to you I did take pictures in it if I feel like it I'll put in the pictures somewhere you might have already seen them I don't know but let me just show it to you okay it's so cute isn't it I really really love it I did the size small and I think I was mostly on gauge my gauge might have been a little bit smaller I should really start um, um, like measuring the bust to see if like I hit gauge and to see if it like matches the pattern. But yeah, this is the cutest thing I've ever knit. I think I really, really am obsessed with it. I cropped it as you can tell, so it just hits the waistband of my sweatpants. And I always wear like a tank top under my knits normally, unless it's like a oversized sweater, but yeah. I really, really love this. Let me tell you a little bit about the construction because it was a like completely new to me construction. I have only heard of it before. I have never done it. Um, it's this like saddle shoulder, I think is what it's called. I won't like give too much away because it is a paid for pattern, but you basically knit the two rectangles and then you do like the back and the front. And then like it's basically a drop shoulder design from there except you have this like section of stitches on hold that you pick up and then like it just seamlessly runs down into the sleeve and it really is the most beautiful thing ever <laughs> but it is the most tedious thing to knit like it I really really as I was knitting this I was really thinking I'm never gonna do another saddle shoulder but then I blocked this and I tried it on and I was like, dang it, I'm going to have to knit a billion more of these, aren't I? Because like you just, with this pattern, I don't know about other saddle shoulder patterns, but you have to cut your yarn like so many times. There was so many in Sweden. And I just prefer a bit more of like a seamless, which like, I guess like it's still technically seamless, but like I feel like all the picking up stitches and all that, like I was worried it was going to look like bad I don't know like messy because I'm not exactly the cleanest like whenever it comes to picking up stitches but like you wouldn't even be able to tell because it just blocked out beautifully so there's also these like double knit ribbings or like hems for the neck sleeves and body and then like for the sleeves and body one there's like a pearl row I think that looks pretty cute I almost didn't do it but I was like I'll follow the pattern and then for the neck edge you sew it down so I'll just get up closer and show it to you dog hair I try not to talk whenever I'm that close to the camera because it can be a little bit loud and I'm pretty sure you can also hear my camera focusing <laughs> okay so yeah 
that just looks so beautiful. I had to figure out how to do it myself because the video was a bit confusing. So I just decided to not even look at the video and do it myself. That turned out very beautiful. It's a bit hard to stick my head through. I don't know, I probably did something wrong. And I really need to add an elastic. That's what the pattern says to do. But now that I've shown it to you, I will go ahead and get into the specs of it. It calls for lace plus light fingering equals fingering. So I use Stroll from Knit Picks and Stroll is like a, a good fingering weight yarn. I would say maybe it's a bit heavier fingering. I don't know. It really worked for this pattern. This pattern is a 24 stitch gauge and I did 3.75 and the pattern calls for three and a half millimeter needles. So that worked out really well for me. It created this really nice fabric. I guess if you don't like a looser fabric, this might not be the best thing to do, but I really, really love a loose fab, like a whole, like a drapier, holier fabric for the summer. Um, but I definitely like could not wear this without a tank top underneath it, like no way. I definitely need the tank top so that um, you can't see through it. Um, I used four seams of my stroll and I have two and a half left so like i guess i actually use like three and a half ish skeins so this like used very very little yarn and that's oops just fuck that and that's really exciting because i can't wait to knit a billion of them and let me just show you the yarn i use get this out Oof. okay i used here it is i'll show you so yeah that's the yarn and it's in the color cranberry heather i have two full skeins left and it's also perfect because this is sock yarn it's 75 super rush merino 25 nylon so if i wanted some cute little matching socks that would be really nice or i could get two more skeins and do like a stripey t-shirt i really really love stroll for summer knits i don't mind merino for the summer because I do live in Canada and the summers do not get very hot here so it's actually kind of nice to have a bit of warmth in my summer knits because there's always like a breeze that could get me a little bit chilly um there's not very many like hot days this is going to be the best summer t-shirt ever and I really really love it I love the boxy fit which I thought I wasn't going to at first like I was a bit worried but I really really like this t-shirt it's like my favorite summer knit ever and i could wear it all the time so yeah i did do a size small for the bit more of an oversized fit because i think i would need to do an extra small if i did my true to size but i don't love the way this t-shirt looks whenever it's true to size because you kind of have like the fitted body and then you have the sleeves that just stick out it looks a bit ill-fitting i think when it's a when it's true to size so I needed to have a little bit more ease because I think that just looks the most flattering on me. I don't know what else to say about this except I just really, really love it. I love the color. I can like dress it up with some like beige. I have like these beige jeans except they're a bit more like dressy than jeans are that I can like make this a cute little dressed up outfit or I can wear it with some sweatpants like I'm wearing right now and it really is like the perfect t-shirt I love it so much um okay now I'm going to talk about my whips kind of before I really get into my whips I just want to mention if you've been following along my videos you'll know I've been knitting the beauty school top by poison girls well I made a mistake on the sleeve and I frogged the sleeve and now it's gone. I'm pretending like it doesn't exist. I don't even want to look at it. So if you guys want to see it, you can go back in my past videos. It's there. I really, really am tired of it. I just need to take a break from it. I think it's just pressuring me so much lately that I just need, I need to just put it aside because 
I just was really not enjoying knitting on it. Um, but I think I will once I can, like don't look at it for like a month. <laughs> so I'm going to move on to a real whip that I have, which is my toasted tea. If you watched my last video, I had this um, white toasted tea on the needles with this Bernat Softy Cotton. That was an acrylic cotton blend and I had some left over from last year's summer knitting, but I frogged that toasted tea because of the yarn. The yarn was not enjoyable to work with. I was just not feeling that t-shirt. Um, and then my drop spell came in, which is what I actually wanted to knit the toasted tea in. So that guy is frogged and I cast on a new one, but I'm even further in it than I was the white one. So I'll show it to you. So yeah, here it is. This is the Toasta Tea in the in Drop Spell in the color Almond Rose. There it is. Um, this was an acquisition last video. I just I couldn't resist. I had a cast on and I didn't want two Toasta Teas on the needle at the same time. And I figured I probably wasn't going to wear that other one anyways, so decided to frog it and I think this is so much cuter and I can't wait to finish it but I haven't worked on it in a couple days because I've been working on some other things but yeah there it is I will get into the details okay I'm knitting the size 3 even though for some reason my Ravelry says I'm knitting the size 2 I'm not this is the size 3 for more of a oversized fit because I really really loved this so much I just I need the oversized cropped t-shirts and I think that's gonna be what I live in this summer even though it's not exactly summer weather yet it is 70 Fahrenheit right now and it's really really gloomy so not exactly summer weather but we'll get there and here, like where I live, summer doesn't really start until July and August. And then those are really the only two summer months you get, then you get fall, which is how I prefer it. But yeah, I'm knitting this on a five millimeter needles. And that's just what the pattern calls for. And I bought six skeins, no, I bought seven skeins of drop spell, but no way, like I'm not gonna be able to I'm not going to have to get into all of those. My mom used four and a half skein for her toasted tea. So I'm a, oh, and we also both did the same. We're both doing the same size. So I think that's probably how much I'll use anyways. I might crop mine more than she cropped hers. I really, really love this yarn. It's, where does it say? It's 53% cotton, 33% viscose, and 14% linen. I've never worked with this yarn before and it's really enjoyable. It's not like rough on the hands i have worked with cotton that's like really rough on the hands well, well like the cotton acrylic blend that my other toasted tea was that was like killing my wrist i don't know i really want to get one of those like um compression gloves to sleep in because like my wrists have actually been killing me lately and i don't know why i haven't been knitting more than normal maybe it is the summer fibers that have been hurting my wrist and fingers, but this one isn't that bad. I hope the lighting in here is good. I just lost like all natural light over there because it looks so, so gloomy. I think it's about to rain, but I guess we'll just go for more of like a cozy vibe today. Oh, I think like, so I think this is actually the same yarn she used in the same color. So like I'm just kind of like recreating hers. I really really do like this color. It was between this and like a dark brown color is what I was going between whenever I was buying this yarn. And I'm doing no modifications. The thing about the toaster tea is there's this like whole nother like PDF you get with the pattern just like full of modifications like eyelets, stripes. There's like one like um what's it called like 
not pl I guess plaid kind of uh, modification that I saw. There's so many modifications. You can do like a pico ribbing. But I just decided to do the plain one and maybe with my next toasted tee that I knit, I might add modifications because I definitely am going to need a white one, I think. My mom knit hers in white and it looks really good. I think maybe this needs to be a finished object in my next podcast. I feel like I can knit this in like two days if I like try to. It's such, such a quick knit. I know Mr. Bobbin and Handmade with Kay did a 24 hour knitting the Tulsa Tea Challenge and it kind of makes me want to do something like that. I don't know if I would even film it, but I definitely, I would love to see like how fast I can knit a Tulsa Tea. That is my Tulsa Tea and I am so, so excited to have the finished object of it. Um, okay, I'm going to show you my socks, but you can skip this part if you want to. I feel like I project my dislike of sock knitting onto all of you. You probably don't mind when I talk about socks, but I don't really like talking about them. But I did, I am on the heel flap, and I really, really hope to finish this soon. This is um, Drop Snored in the color Old Pink, I think. And I'm just doing the crazy sock lady vanilla sock pattern. <laughs> um, and I'm going to put these away because I've talked about them so so much already I really only knit on these whenever I need an on-the-go knit and none of my garments are in mindless stockinette so then I just put this in my bag and this is what I knit on the go <laughs> but if I have a sweater that's on like the sea of stockinette body then that's what I would rather bring than socks okay the next whip I have is a newly casted on one. This is the Simper Slipover V-neck. Let me show it to you. I have not joined in the round yet. So it's just this like really really deep v-neck slipover and if you... okay it just started raining. Yeah if you've been pulling me for the past year almost you'll know I've never knit a slipover before. I've just always been like it's not my style. I don't I don't wear sleeveless tops. So I was like, why would I knit something just to layer on top of something else? But I I don't know. I just really, really wanted to try one to see if I liked it. And I have two white t-shirts that are like see-through and I can't wear on their own. So like if I wore like a see-through white t-shirt and then put this on top then I don't have to like layer like a tank top underneath the white t-shirt so it's not see-through. You know what I mean? So I was like, this might actually be the perfect summer garment. And I'm using Line Brain Trubu in the color Celery. And this was going to be a look at my holes top by James and Watts. but. Like, okay, I swatched for that, but I could not bring it in me to do an all-over lace pattern yet. I still really want to do the look at my holes, but I'm thinking maybe... I think I need to either do like a white, black, or beige one. Something like really neutral that I can wear with anything because I feel like by the time I'm done with that pattern, I'm not going to want to knit it again because it just looks like a lot of work. And... I haven't completely decided if I like how open the mesh is. I saw like, um, at H&M, I saw this like mesh top that had like really small holes in it. And I think that's something I would rather go for than like the really, really open, like meshy thing. Um, I think like the, if you guys know the Breeze Bag by Petite Knit. I kind of want like a top, like a t-shirt in that kind of meshy design. I kind of like that better, but I haven't seen one yet. But I also haven't been looking, so I don't know. When the time comes for me to do an all over mesh pattern, I will. I just needed something a bit more basic. I wonder if you can hear the rain. There, there's some ambiance for us. But yeah. This is just a slipover that looks kind of weird because it's not in the round. 
And I'm using four and a half millimeter, I think. Oh, yeah, yeah, four and a half millimeter. And I am still on my first ball. I have four though. I'll show you what the thing looks like. And the composition of this is 100% rayon from Boom Boo, I think. Yeah. And I've never worked with Truba before. This is kind of part of my hands though. I don't know, it's just so slippery and it kind of hurts. It hurts my wrist right here, but then it also hurts like, I can't remember which one, but one of these two fingers, like it hurts. So I've kind of just been going a bit slow with this. I just realized, I've not even told you, normally I tell you the day I cast it on and the day I cast off. Um, I cast this on on June 3rd. That's when I cast this on. I want to quickly tell you how long it took me to knit my T number one. Um, rewinding a bit. My T number one, I started on May 27th and I finished on June 10th. So it took me, took me 14 days to knit this, which is such a small amount of time for a fingering weight t-shirt but I did like power through it because I love the yarn so much. I love straw. Back to the simple slipover. I'm doing size A of the simple slipover, which is the smallest size because I think my gauge is off, so it might give me a bit of, it might, it might give me size small, I think. And I'm also gonna crop it. Cute is that outfit gonna be? Like some light wash jeans with my white t-shirt and then this summery color, it's gonna look beautiful. Also, this color's pretty trendy right now, don't you think? I think this like lime green, I've been seeing a lot of it lately. My next work in progress is my Anchor Tee by Petite Knit, obviously, which I think this is the only Petite Knit I have shown today. It is, it's, this is the only Petite Knit I've shown today. Are you proud of me? I used, literally my Instagram right now is only Petite Knit. So I need to start posting some non-petite knit things to show people that I actually knit things other than petite knit, because I promise I do. I just not lately. But now I have been casting on non-petite knit things, and this is the only petite knit on my needles if you don't count stuff on ice. But this is the anchor tee, and this is, this is the fingering weight version. There's the anchor summer tee, which I think is DK, but I'm doing the fingering one. And I'm using Illamani Sabri. Let me show that to you. Illamani Sabri. Isn't it so beautiful? I really, really love this yarn. I used it last year in like a pink color. And I really, really love it. It's 85% cotton, 15% baby alpaca. This is what it looks like. You've probably seen it. It's kind of popular, I think. But I got this at my local yarn shop and it's just, it's color 81 and it's beautiful. I got two skeins because that's all it takes me to knit a t-shirt is 200 grams normally. So that's what I got and I got it for 21 Canadian dollars. So it is pretty affordable. I'm using 3.25 millimeters. Wait, that sounds weird. Mill? 3.25 millimeter needles. Um, and the pattern calls for three millimeter. I'm doing size small. And it, it took me a long time to decide to do the anchor tee. I almost didn't do it. I wasn't convinced I even liked it. But I really like the cover picture, like the sample Petite Knit is wearing. And I really like Handmade by Florence's version. I'll put Handmade by Florence's version right here, giving editing me a lot of work to do. But I like I like watching podcasters that show pictures, so here's Handmade by Florence version that made me really want to knit it. And like I was a bit worried because I have two circular yoked sweaters. It's like my Sunday sweaters. If you watched my Everything I Knit in 2022 video. I show them to you and I kind of complain a little bit about the fit. I just, I'm not convinced on circular yokes, but I really like the anchor tee and there's like some raglan shaping after you finish the ribbing detail. So I was thinking that might help the shape of it a bit and it looks good on other people so maybe it'll look good on me. 
I am gonna add short rows whenever I get to the raglan section, I think. I don't know. I'm either gonna... I think I'll add short rows before the raglan section, but like, like in between the raglan and the ribbing is when I'll add the short rows, I think. Because um, this pattern doesn't have short rows and it kind of like, even in the pictures, it like rides up some and I know that would annoy me. I actually did an Instagram poll and I was asking people if I should do this or the coloring book tee by Amy Cher. And this one, but I'm still gonna, no, no, this did not win. This one for me, <laughs> I picked it. So technically it won, but the poll, but like the my Instagram followers voted for the coloring book tea and I went against them So I think I'm still gonna do the coloring book tea and I will show you what yarn I think I'm gonna do with it at the end of like in the acquisition section I think I have some yarn in my I don't know. I'll tell you I'll get more to that later but this I picked this one even though the poll picked the coloring book tee and I'm pretty happy with it. I really like the process. You just do these like um, rib sections with a row of increases and it's pretty nice and I'm excited to have it. I really really like the Elamani Sabri so much. It doesn't even feel like I'm working with cotton. It feels like I'm working with wool. It's the softest cotton I've ever felt and the baby alpaca gives it like not a halo. Like, definitely not a halo, but, like, a fuzz. I want to, like, show it to you, but I don't know. You'll be able to see that. I'm not going to be able to show you. I, I was trying to show you, but um, the camera wouldn't focus on it. But the baby alpaca gives it a little tiny halo. Not even really a halo, but it just makes it really, really pleasant to work with. Yeah, that's the anchor D. I'm going to crop it, probably, so that... I can wear it with some high-waisted jeans and I don't have to tuck it in and it's going to be so cute and hopefully I will like the fit of it. I started this on June 12th if I didn't already say that. So today is June 16th so four days ago was when I started this and I have made a little bit of progress so hopefully I don't think this will be done by next video I don't think but um, hopefully I get a lot of progress done on it. Oh, that was my last whip. Okay, moving on to acquisitions. So the first acquisition I acquired is my, there is suspense for this because it's amazing and it's beautiful. This is my knitting for all of pure silk. I got four of these and I actually talked about this in my last video, I think don't remember. I think I mentioned that I had an order coming in and this is the first time I've ordered from Knitting for Olive. I have been wanting to try this pure silk forever and I was getting FOMO hearing everyone talk about it this summer and I just wanted it so bad. So we finally got it and whenever I say we, I'm talking about me and my mom. My mom also knits, which I mentioned earlier, and um, we order yarn together. So this is the color dark cognac. I don't know how to pronounce that. Dark cognac, I think is how I other people pronounce it. And I'm going to make a cumulus tea by Petit Man with this. I have my other cumulus tea, this like dark green one up here. And I really, really love it. But I need a summer short sleeve version. So basically like how the pattern was intended. Because I modified this to make it long sleeve. I really wanted to follow the pattern exactly. So yeah, I'm going to make the cumulus tape of pure silk. Which is what the pattern even calls for. So I'm so excited. I almost got, like I was toying around with some other colors. I almost got um, like a pink color. I don't know the names, but I almost got one of the pink colors. And I decided not to, but I almost got Dusty Artichoke, which is the color like everyone gets, and Putty. I almost got that, but then I, it just took me so long to decide, but I landed on this color, obviously. And it wasn't too expensive, and it also didn't take very long to get here. I thought it would, I thought the shipping was going to be crazy, 
and I thought because it was coming from somewhere in Europe it was going to take like so long to get here but it really didn't so that is scary because now I'm just going to want to order all the knitting for Olive. I really want to try their mohair and their merino but I'll knit with this one first. It's just so beautiful. That's the pure silk cream name for Olive. And my mom got the color Soft Peach, in case you're wondering. Okay, moving on to my next acquisition, which is Drops Baby Merino. This was on sale, so this was like super cheap. But this is the Drops Baby Merino. I got it from Wool Warehouse in the color Powder Pink, I think. It's color number 44. It's this really cute, like, not baby pink, but it's like off-white with like a drop of pink in it. So it's like kind of like a barely there pink almost. And it really is beautiful and I am so excited. I'm going to knit the poppy tee with this. Except not only am I going to knit the poppy tee, I'm going to knit the poppy tee with a friend from Knit Night. And we're going to meet up and cast it on together. And it's going to be so fun. And then we'll have this cute little like buddy knit. It's going to be so good. And I can't wait to cast it on. But I'm so excited like because we'll cast it on together in real life. And it's a construction I've never done before. So it would be kind of fun to like figure that out with another person. <laughs> so yeah. And I got, I don't remember if I said this, but I got eight skeins of this. And it's like a, it's a sport weight. So I, I've never used sport weight on its own, so I don't really know what's the normal amount to get. So I figured eight would probably be good. And if it's too little, then it drops yarn. I can always just get another skein. That is Drops Baby Merino. And it was only like $20, I think, because of the sale. So the next acquisition I have, which is also my last acquisition, is this yarn. Look at it. Tell me, this isn't so beautiful. Ignore my crusty nails. Isn't it stunning? This is Titus. I've never heard of this before. This is from my local yarn shop. And here's the ball band. So yeah, let me know if you've used this yarn before and if you've liked it. I don't think I've heard one person talk about this. But recently, my local yarn shop started carrying this. And me and my mom went to the Knit in Public Day that my local yarn shop was hosting. And they had like this sale going on. So I had to get some of this. I got two. So I was thinking this could be the coloring book tea. Or another tea number one. I don't know yet. I think I'll swatch and see which one will work better. It is a thicker fingering. Like it's um this is 100 grams and it has 350 yards. Whenever a I mean normally a 100 gram fingering weight skein has 400 and something yards. I'm trying to think does this even say it's fingering weight? It does not. But it does say recommended needles are 2.75 to 3.25. I'm pretty positive I'll be able to get a t-shirt out of this. I think probably I'll need to use 4 millimeter needles. So recently, I've been really wanting to knit with navy blue. I get really fixated on a color. And recently I was fixated on navy blue. I think this will look so good with like my beige pants. This is really such a beautiful color. And it really isn't summer appropriate yarn, but I think it'll be fine for a t-shirt. And it'll be a little bit less like t-shirty and more blousey. That is this Titus yarn. I really, really am excited to knit with it. I just didn't want to cast it on yet because I kind of wanted it to be an acquisition first before I cast it on, but it might be cast on in my next video. Probably after I finish my anchor tee, I will cast this on. If I can manage to be patient enough to do that. 
and that is the last of my acquisitions so yeah those are my plans that I have and stuff you can expect to see on the needles in the next video hopefully but sometimes what happens is I say all these things I plan on knitting and then in the next video I do nothing that I, I have completely different things on my needles it all depends on what designers come out with what patterns like I'm sorry but if the petite knit drops like a t-shirt I'm probably gonna like forget all these plans and knit that I don't know it doesn't seem like there's any plans for a new t-shirt but if there was you know I will be running over to that that's all I have for today's video I'm just gonna get into my channel recommendation if you are wanting some more knitting content to watch after this video head over to sweater and spices knitting channel here's the name right here I watched some of her recent videos and I really really loved them her electric blue poppy tea looks so good so yeah head over to her channel if you need some more knitting content to watch and thank you so much for watching this video and making it to the end and if you want to subscribe you can like comment do all the youtube things if you want to comment leave in the comments what you were knitting on during this video i really would love to know that and hopefully i will see you in my next video